Hi, Mick here, and in today's video on tides, we're looking at tidal heights and the rule of twelfths. In previous videos, we looked at the tide tables. The tide tables, of course, are worked out for a specific location and also for specific dates. For this video, we're going to use the chart section for Holt Harbour. Any of the depths marked on our chart are below what is called chart datum, chart datum being the lowest astronomical tide. If we were to experience this lowest of low tides, any of the depths in the white area are over 10 metres deep, any of the depths in the light blue area are between 5 and 10 metres deep, and any of the depths in the darker blue area are between 0 and 5 metres deep. The green area is a little bit different. If we were to experience this lowest of low tides, the numbers marked in the green area are actually heights above low water. These heights are called drying heights and are signified by the line underneath the number. And finally, the yellow colour signifies dry land or land above high water. Looking back at our tide tables, I'm going to take it that I was going down on Friday the 29th of May and I'm looking to go down at 11 o'clock. Looking at the tide tables there, I can see it was low water at 11 o'clock and the height was 1.1 metre. If I take that 1.1 metre back to our navigation chart, for the example highlighted, I just add it on. So 11.5 plus our 1.1 metres would give us 12.6 metres at this location at 11 o'clock. Similarly, at the depth now highlighted, 4.4 plus our 1.1 would give us 5.5 metre depth at this location at 11 o'clock. And finally, if we're to keep our 1.1 metre of depth and apply it to our drying height here of 0.3 metres, we actually take the 0.3 from our 1.1, giving us 0.8 of a metre depth at this location at 11 o'clock. But what if we wanted to work out tidal height at a time in between high and low water? Our first step is to work out what the tidal range is. So for the example here, I'm just saying low water is at 12 o'clock and it's 0 0.3 meters deep, and high water is going to be at 6 o'clock and it's going to be 3.9 meters deep, giving us a tidal range of 3.6 meters. I'm going to take it, I want to work out the tidal height for 5 p.m. The first stage is to divide our tidal range by 12. In our example here, that gives us 0.3 meters for each 12th. The tide doesn't come in at one steady rate. It starts off slowly, builds up speed until about the middle of the six hours, and then eases off again as it reaches high water. In the first hour after low water, it only comes in one twelfth of its range. In the second hour, it then comes in two twelfths of its range, showing that speed up in rate. In the third hour, it comes in three twelfths, and at the end of that third hour is the fastest flow of the tide. In the fourth hour, again, we get three twelfths, but it starts slowing off then, so in the fifth hour we only get two twelfths of the range, and in the sixth hour we just have the one twelfth, and where it stops then at high water. So if I tidy up the graphic a little bit, and then work from the bottom, adding the twelfths as we go. So at one o'clock we would have had 0.6 metres of depth, two o'clock we would have 1.2 metres of depth, at three o'clock 2.1 metres of depth, four o'clock three metres of depth, and at five o'clock we'd have 3.6 metres of depth, and then one last twelfth bringing us up to high water at six o'clock. So it had been the tidal height at five o'clock was what I wanted, so that's the 3.6 metres. So I can apply that to any one of the depths on my navigation chart and just add it onto those numbers. Whereas if I wanted to apply it to a drying height, we'll just subtract the drying height from it to get my answer for that time. So that's the end of today's video on tidal heights and the rule of twelfths. Please like, share, and if you're on YouTube, subscribe.